How's it, how's it? And today we're looking at a photographer whose controversial and intimate portraits of her own children rocketed her to fame. Today, recognized as one of the leading artistic photographers in the United States, Sally Mann's photography is absolutely gorgeous and beautiful, and I can't wait to share it with you today. Thank you for joining me here today on The Photographic Eye. Sally Mann's philosophy and approach to photography is to try and make art from, from the everyday ordinary. Throughout her career, Sally Mann has stayed close to her home in her native Virginia to create her photographs. And, and these, are, these are photographs that I feel almost seem to drip with affection for their subject, whether that's their, her children or, or the landscape around her. Sally's early beginnings as an artist started when she was in university. She was working as a photographer doing sort of grip and grin shots and, and you know, group photographs of sports teams. When you look at some of her early personal work, it's easy to see the influences that she's getting from you know, photographers like Edward Weston in her compositions. And there's a strong similarity between the two of them. Despite being well known today as a photographer who created loving portraits of her children, initially she thought that they were only sort of worthy of, of snapshots to put it, put it into her own, her own words. And then sort of one day her daughter Jessie came to her with a giant gnat bite on her face and she decided that it looked so striking that, that she wanted to photograph it. Um, and it was here when she was looking at the resulting uh, picture that, that it occurred to her that right under her nose, was, was this art, was, was, was the, the, the scope of art, and she didn't need to go off into the world to find art, and that it was all around her. Um, and, and this is when Sally, in her own words, has started to see things sort of in, uh, around her life sort of differently, and, and with, the, with the, the, the eyes of an artist. She'd already published a book of, of portraits called At Twelve Portraits of Young Women, and this was her first foray into the genre that she would become known for. Of course, at the time she was photographing other people's children and, um, and one of the best known and most striking images from this book is a, an image called Candy Cigarette and I feel that that image most strongly echoes the later work that Sally would go on to produce with, with her own children. And, and in this book, At Twelve, you know, the portraits of young, of young ladies, you can see that she's experimenting with various ideas about sort of composition and, and style. And, and some of this, this work sort of draws considerably from, from a, a photographer called Mary Ellen Mark, who was a well-known sort of uh, documentary photographer. And it, and it feels quite gritty. It's important to remember that photographers don't really emerge fully formed as it were from, from the womb, but you know, but they grow and they develop over time and, and drawing inspiration from other people is, 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 is certainly not a sin. And, and with these portraits of Sally's, you know, these are, these are striking portraits of, of children on the cusp of, of adulthood and, and they attracted a small amount of, of controversy, but nothing, nothing like she was going to get with, with her third book, which was, is, is called Immediate Family. Having grown up as somewhat of a feral child through her own admission and, and awful, not awfully keen on wearing clothes when she was younger, it seemed natural that Sally would gravitate towards photographing her own children in this state. And of course, while there's a lot of controversy around sort of the, the nude child figures in, in this book, it should be noted there are so few of them um, that, you know, they constitute only like a tenth of the images in the actual photograph. So it was really a bit more of a storm in a teacup. And... One of the things that I really enjoy about this period of Sally's work is that it does capture this essence and this freedom of, of a rural childhood and, and almost like a kind of a Narnia or so Never Never Land sort of quality to them. And of course, you get this because, first of all, Sally is a fantastic Per, you know, artist who can who can see art in the everyday, and the other is that that working with a large format camera is a very slow and very deliberate process, and of course it gives the artist time to reflect and create the the, the precise photograph and, and and work that they're looking to achieve, and and I think is a, is a measure of Sally's expertise that she can blend this slow process with this the, the free spirited nature of, of childhood. Sally somewhat struggles with this concept of, of being an artist and she feels an enormous amount of pressure to continuously evolve and, and grow and, and improve her work. And it's this idea that each image needs to be better than the last one, that, that, that they, an artist can't back off, as it were, that, that pushes, you know, forces her to push her envelope you know, harder and harder and harder um, because 
you know, she wants to evolve and, and improve. And if you look at her evolution as a photographer, you can strikingly see this, this in action. You know, she started off with, with photographing her children and, and over time they become smaller and smaller and smaller in the frame to what you're left with is, is almost a landscape photograph. And, and it, was, it was here that so two things came to pass. One, the children were, were obviously getting older um, and, and Sally was also starting to get tired of photographing her children and wanted to do actual landscape photography. So she said that it felt like a, a, a useful segue to, to start becoming a, a you know, landscape photographer and, and experimenting also with uh, you know, wet processes like amber types and tin types and collodion uh, with, with her antique large format cameras, which I feel lends her photographs an ethereal quality to them that sort of echoes almost back to the, big, the very beginnings of, of photography and, and certainly you know, makes me think of the, you know, the alchemy of, of, of the whole process, this taking something as elusive as light and fixing it onto a plate through an almost mystical and magical process. It's almost a counterpoint to her earlier work with the children that her later work is focused on what happens after we're no longer here, you know, what mark do we leave upon the world? And, and she's done a series of photographs ex exploring this idea. I mentioned earlier that there was a series of photographs of um, her doing so sort of dead bodies as they returned to their natural state in the land. But she's also photographed the Civil War battlefields that dot the landscape of her home around Virginia. These eerie images remind me somewhat of, of Roger Fenton and Matthew Brady, who are both photographers uh, in, the, in the later part of the, of the 1800s who covered the Crimean War and, and, and the Civil War respectively. Perhaps it's because of the similar processes used or because you know, Sally's managed to capture the essence of these places long after these mementos occurred that I can sort of feel like she's sort of stepped back in time into the shoes of, of Matthew Brady walking these Civil War battlefields and, and saying, look, these landscapes have seen you know, this death and destruction, but have returned to a more sort of natural state, but they still hold the essence of, of these great events. She's also created a series of portraits of a Larry who since in the mid 1990s uh, has had muscular dystrophy and she's been documenting his unfortunate progress, of course, through this illness. Uh, especially more so given that Sally said when they met uh, as late teens, you know, Larry was a big, strong, hulking man. And to see this you know, wasting away has, has been a source of obviously, you know, distress. Um, but being able to document it in a way that makes it feel like it's art. And, and, and again, drawing on this idea that art is all around us has, has made those, these, these, these images extremely powerful. Sally is so much more than just a photographer, you know, who's photographed her children, um, you know, for a, a controversial book. Her photography both inspires us and it challenges us to look a bit more closely at the, at the mysteries of the everyday world that surrounds us. And again, this comes back to this alchemy of, of photography. And, and I hope it's inspired you to look in your own environment and, and see what, can, can, what can, can be considered art. I hope you enjoyed that look at the photography of Sally Mann. And, and, and thanks once again for spending time with me here at The Photographic Eye. If you'd like to be notified when there are more videos like this one, please do hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. It'll be so nice to be able to share these videos with you. Thanks ever so much again, and I'll see you soon.